we're pessimistic about some of our conditions, even if we talk about political, economic, or social, we have to just stay focused. That's right. And, and respect our mother. And, and stop be, beating up on ourselves. Right, stop beating ourselves up. And mama, right. as you said, she's number one. Mm -hmm. She's the one that set the standard and raised the bar. Right. People misinterpret her. And we have to perpetuate that myth. No. Mama was impeccable. That's why Mama didn't have religion. Mama didn't have a Bible. Mama didn't have a church. Because Mama wasn't sinful. Not being sinful, she didn't need to save her soul. Now, we are civilized, and we are sinful, and we have to pay to save our soul. <laughs> okay. Well, I, and I think that, you know, everything has to be bought and sold now. That's what based on the whole world of time, everything is money. Time is money now. Everything is about, you know, a purchase, you know. And, and I think that uh, we have been so bought and sold, you know, uh, many times over. Um, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's do this. I know we have probably, I don't know how much time we have left. You know, maybe my producers will tell me. But I think that we should um, talk about diseases in the way that you do so prolifically. And that is, you know, if I said to you, Dr. Sabi, that I have issues with my kidneys, I know there's only one disease, right? And you're, and you're already proven. You remember that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So when we look at, and when we look at, you know, the levels of diseases in the body, how the body actually takes on certain um, deleterious behavior, because, you know, now you, your kidneys are overworked or they're not working properly or they're, they're being, you know, and, but then we go and we have to go to these places where they say you got to be on dialysis, you know, and then you're tied to a machine and maybe the rest of your life, you know, now you have to go and get yourself cleaned out, as they say, you know, and then put the blood back in. And talk about that, you know, from the standpoint of cellular memory and cellular uh, food uh, and cellular um, retardation, maybe. How is that, you know, so in such, you know, that we are not even able to show, and you have proven it, that you can transform and turn around what they say is a, a disease that can't be turned around? You're referring to dialysis. Yeah, dialysis, right. I go to Ragunanda. He's the best example yet. Washington, D.C., 1983. Fairmont and 13th Street. By Vince. Ragu came. I've been on dialysis for five years. Could you help me? I try. To get a treatment. Two months later, Ragu is urinating. Ragu is urinating, and he is happy. <laughs> Ragu urinating this month, next month, the following month, three months, four months. On the fifth month, Ragu tells me something very crazy. Ragu asked me, Chebi, I want to go to the ashram in North Carolina. I said, Ragu. The ashram, I think that's Indian, isn't it? But you're an African, what are you going to do there? Well, you know, I, I'm a Krishna. I said, but a Krishna being an African, being a Krishna? You mean to tell me an African needs India to save himself? I said, do me a favor. When you get to the ashram, don't eat anything that the ashram has to offer. If you do, you're dead. Man, Ragu thought I was joking. Radu, Ragu went to the ashram and started packing it in. I didn't see Ragu for three days. On the fourth day that I saw Ragu was four o'clock in the morning. The train walks at my window. When I look outside, it's Ragu Nanda. Save me. Save me. Ragu is dying. Ragu has swollen up like a balloon. Ragu didn't believe me. You see, Indian food has polymers that makes up curry, which is very dangerous. And he's coming from a situation that was very, very, very heavy, very stressful. Ragu died 6 o'clock that morning. Showing us that we, the African people, we cannot eat Indian food. We cannot eat Caucasian food. 
because our cellular predisposition was not designed for those things. But nobody came with the truth to us. They take advantage of us. And we being vulnerable, we allow it. We allow it. So a regiment, if one is on dialysis, a regiment of obviously changing your consumption habits, obviously your diet has to change maybe drastically. And you have to stop, you know, continue to uh, internalize or in, 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 intake, you know. That a group. sensible diet. Right. But now, what does the, what does the formulas do? How does the herb okay. specifically I, know to I, go to the kidneys? I gave Ragu a composition known as focus verisicosis. It has potassium iodide. It has potassium bromide. What that does is to go into the kidney and begin to break up all of the crystallization in there. Calcification. Man. That's right. And clean the villi. And there goes urine. And it revitalizes the kidney simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But the body is going through stress and is weak. But you will be able to recover from it if you continue on the diet. You have to maintain a certain diet, an alkali diet. Mm -hmm. It happened with Miss Emma Wright. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember her? Yeah, yeah. With the sickle cell? cell yeah. mm -hmm. in, in, in 60 days, not one cell was sickle. Mm -hmm. She went to California, and she started packing it in, mm -hmm. and she went in a crisis. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that there are food designed for us of our cellular structure. Mm -hmm. So, as we look at this picture tonight, who love us? Who have shown love for us? Is it that they're ignorant, or is it that they just don't care about us? Well, either one. We found out that whether allopathic, homeopathic, ayurvedic, yin-yang, they all failed us but the African biomineral balance. And it happens so, it is ours. Mm -hmm. And also, even the invasion, you know, because you say about cassava, we eating a lot of cassava, eating comfrey, all those things, you know, we now has been imported into Africa to the continent and actually now becomes a part of the, our staple. But that's not our staple either. Cassava. No! Right. And you know, a little boy, 12 years old, mm -hmm. said something to me that was so strange. Dr. Kweku Ando took people to Ghana. And in Ghana, they had a class. And the little boys in the class, the little boy knew me personally. So when Dr. Kweku Ando was talking about cassava and the uses and the benefits of it, the little boy said to Kweku, Dr. Kweku, Dr. Ando, Dr. Sebi teaches that cassava has cyanide and starch. Oh, don't listen to him. Why would that message be afforded? No. So what I'm seeing, that Bolingo has raised the bar, and we have to live by a new code of ethics. Because we have been, well, we have not been as responsive to our needs that we still have. But we're growing. I would have liked for Dr. Kwekuando to take a different position. I'm not saying that he was wrong or right. I'm not saying I'm right tonight, because mm -hmm. I'm growing. Yes, we kill AIDS and sickle cell and blindness. That doesn't mean you know everything. Mm -hmm. We're growing. And to know everything is to know nothing, anyway. No, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that, you know, you, 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 do a, you bring a great point in terms of us being able to be more patient with each other. I think that that's a problem. That it's important. Have. It's so important. It's essentially important. And you have proven that over the years, you know, that, you know, I remember you said that a little while ago, but everybody's right. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> right. right. So, you know, you never get to a point of having to have this polarity conversation about trying to prove yourself right, because that can kill you, you know, trying to prove yourself right, you know, but at the same time, we all have the, a, 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 a destiny that we all should be tied up into that destiny of us 
reclaiming our position on this planet as Africans. I like the way you allow this thing to flow. I like the way you allow this thing to flow. I'm telling you, I'm going to go. You allow the, the information to flow out. I've been interviewed by many, many times. And they put these barriers and they twist things around and they, and they confound the message. Tonight, you let the message flow, something that I've never experienced with many others before you. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. well, you said it, you know, that it's time. It's time for message to flow, and I'm just right on time. So you are there. <laughs> but, I, but I say that in all due respect, and I, I'm humbled by that, and I appreciate, you know, the acknowledgement. You know, I don't want to compliment on yourself, and I'm not saying that, you know, just to try to patronize you, because you are uh, very much of an established icon in our community. And I love you. I've been loving you ever since I was in New York, loving your spirit. And, you know, and, you know I, I can say that, you know, as you talk about divine and cosmic law, I already knew this was going to happen. You know, this had to happen, you know, and I think that it's important, you know, because of the respectability that you have already gained. You know, yes, last night, you know, that was a, a testament of your work. You know, to have that Congress hall filled the way it was, you know, I, I'm going to give yourself a round of applause for that. Because that means the people are ready and they're receptive and they're ready to listen and hear. You know, when we've been, um, we've been, uh, uh, dodging and trying to avoid it. So what we're going to do, because we're running out of time for this segment, we got a little more, we're going to get some of my audience, because I know last night some of you, I heard y'all in the hallway talking about, he didn't even give a name. I want to ask him a question. So we may get a chance so we can ask some questions. Are you willing to always say yes, sir. Questions? So we're going to take a quick recess. You guys can get up and get the blood out your butt a little bit. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back, people. We're having a good time. Give yourself a round of applause. We're having a wonderful time here. Not only are we having a good time, but we're being edified and educated, and we're also being enlightened. And that's important for us to really come to a journey. And you talk about 500 years of this journey of us trying to figure out who we are, and the way we figure that out is how we eat. <laughs> you know, because they say you are what you eat, right? So we have to come to grips and realize that that's a serious statement. And it also speaks to a lot of why we are still crazy as ever and still having all these problems. And because Dr. Sabi has come to say, well, we need to make another decision. We need to, well, make a decision as an acronym for MAD. If you mad at something, make a decision. You know, change your path so we can be able to get back on as pathologies are, because pathology means the study of your path, right? So when you're sick, you know, you have a pathology, that means you have to study your path. I know Dr. Sabi said this language is not ours. It's not. But we can make it work, and we can know that there's some spells in that bad boy. So we just never know that when we learn the language, we have to use it in our best interest until we learn our own language or language that we left. left. What I want to talk about quickly before we go to uh, Q&A yeah. is um, something that stood out for me as well to show that, that, that gave me more confirmation because I already had enough that you were on the right path. But when you begin to speak about our Omec Totec ancestors, and that is so essential because it's all of, Mexico. yeah, out of Mexico, yeah. you know, and what they have done to prove to who we are right now and why we should be the way we ought to be because they are the ones that really has the answer to a lot of the issues that we have now in our communities because they held on to the um, the sacredness of our surgeon. This is why you know Professor Ivan Van Sertima uh, talks about that they came before Columbus. And he talks about the Omex civilization over here in this side of the continent, not just Africa, but you know to show that we were everywhere and we are everywhere. But but you you, you brought out something yesterday. You were talking about Mexico and, and Mexico. We know we talk about the Omex, the old Mexicans, right? The original Mexicans, right? <laughs> That's what Omex means, right? Talk about them uh, in terms of your relationship to that, because you said Mexico was so critical. That's why they always talk about the Mexican and immigration. Y'all think it's something that you know is not what we think it is. But there's something more sinister going on about why they don't like Mexicans and why they don't want Mexicans here or why they're trying to uh, have this border discussion. And, you know, it's something always deeper. And every time you listen to somebody like Brother Sabi or talk about Brother Professor Ivan Van Sertima, we get reminded that there's something about our ancestors that we don't really know. And, we, uh, and, they, and they're closer to us than we can even probably even fathom. So talk about, you know, that to the degree of, of, of Mexico and the significance and the Omic. To, uh, Toltec and, and Zapotec. Um, the Olmec society was a highly ethical society. 
It wasn't a society like Egypt. Egypt was a confounded society. It was a society that was built with Greeks, Persian, and Italian. Egypt was not like Mexico. Mexico was thoroughbred. This is why today the descendant of the Mexican has a level of integrity that nobody on the planet has exhibited. Not even the Egyptian in Egypt today exhibit that level of integrity. They people didn't eat corn. They didn't eat wheat, the Egyptian did. They didn't eat cows. They didn't eat hogs, the Egyptian did. The Mexican ate what they call teosinte. Uh, mm -hmm. And when I get home with Marina tomorrow, the ladies right now in Honduras is making some tamales out of teosinte. Man, can I cook? Sure. Can I, can I go? Yeah. Of course. Oh, I'm, I'm going right here. Cause Look. Make me hungry, man. When I go to Mexico now, mm -hmm. I always face people that is going to share a level of integrity and morality that you would never found in Egypt today nor yesterday. And don't talk about the pyramid, mm. because the pyramid is in Mexico. Oh, yeah. You could put the Egyptian inside of them four yeah, times. Yeah, four times, yeah. You understand? Oh, yeah, oh, very much so. But the Mexican people are so humble that you would never get that from them. They and they alone are the only people on the planet that is cosmically in tune, a Mexican. Right. No Egyptian, no African, a Mexican. And to prove that, when I was sick, I went to black herbalists. I went to Chinese herbalists. I went to white herbalists. Mm -hmm. I went to Arab herbalists. I went to Mexican, 90 days. I'm here 52 years later, doing what that man said I was going to do. When I was 30, I was impotent. The Mexican said, if you listen to me, you will live beyond 80, and you will make babies in your 70s. I said, you out of your mind. I can't have sex now. How could I have it in my 70s? He said, are you going to listen to me? That you do not find in America today mm -hmm. among the healers. There aren't any healers in America today that has afforded to anyone that level of healing. Alfredo Cortez did it 52 years ago for me. And I'm sitting back, and I'm waiting for brothers today to show that, no, they sit back and they begin to criticize. You don't have the Mex you don't hear the Mexican doing that. You know what? I am known in Mexico, Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, by millions of people. Never a negative comment about Dr. Sevi. Call him and you see. But in America, the clip tonight, <laughs> the urban clip tonight. Mm. Instead of respecting their mama, they chose to violate their mama. Because when Dr. Shady won that case, raising the standard and setting the bar, what was they supposed to do? They were supposed to come to me. Oh yeah. To share with this scientific endeavor. Mm -hmm. Right? Did they come? No, they didn't. Because the healers of America today that are black, they are the ones that are compromising the health of the black race. And the white man knows it. That's why they agree with them. I would agree with them too, if I was a white man. Because they're writing books. And they're talking nonsense. But they are not doing anything that complements the human body. You understand? So the Olmec wasn't built on the same foundation as these right. healers that we have today. The Olmec healer, listen to this. I go to Cuauhtémoc La Morelo, a beautiful place in Mexico. I said, what is that? He said, that's Kila. This is Damiana. I said, may I have a kilo? He said, no. I said, why? No, the man is bad feet. The man is bad feet. 
selling herbs in the marketplace. I want this herb. She could make money off of me. The man said, no, I'm not going to sell you this herb. I said, why? Your license plate on your car. I said, what does my license plate on my car have to do with this herb? He said, everything. Why? He said, California. And the best Damiana in the world come from California. Mm. If I tell you this, I'm not being truthful. That you will not find among the healers today integrity. in the black community. They do not have integrity. So I dismissed them. Look what they said. They told his sister last night when she asked them, how come Dr. Savi isn't part of the urban kryptonite? Because you guys aren't healing anything. He is the one that's healing. How come he's not part of it? But what the sister didn't know, that a black healer prefers to die than to live the truth, they are lacking of integrity. That man did not sell me that herb because he could not betray himself. This is the level of integrity that we at Bolingo is constructing today around. We are not going to allow that. I don't care who you are, whether you're my mama or my sister. If you ever make a mistake by telling someone something other than the truth, you're out. Because you have no business doing that. And this is what we are playing with. We are playing with people who have yet to behave in that manner. Mexicans, they are number one. They had to be number one. And incidentally, they are the only people on earth that eat a natural food as a staple. Okay. Right. And I think it's important to, to, to point out, you know, that when we talk about the Mexicans and their, and their statues. Man, they're beautiful. The statues, you see how short they are. You know, the old Mexicans you know, were also short Africans, as they, they say they were. But, you know, when the conquistadors came and they invaded, that's when they begin to see exactly how they used to, you know, impose themselves on what we see now to be Mexicans as well. So the spirit of who they are is actually rooted in the DNA of Africa. They collaborate with me mm -hmm. right now. So they know who they are. They just are. introduced me to an herb. Right. That there aren't any black healers in America that knows about these herbs. But the Mexican right. came and said, hey, bro, this is what we found. She looked. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. That's beautiful. Then I would go to them. Right. I said, did you know about this? No. Well, boom, 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 boom. And we put them together. And we come up with a little project, a product. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we collaborate. I don't get that from the healers in America. They talk things about me and they say things that are, are not too favorable. Mm -hmm. not too, mm -hmm. but that's well, that's it. part of the sickness. That's part of the indicative about that's being okay. sick. That's what it is. They, they need some viento or something. You know, that's okay. <laughs> now, they got to pay for it, though. They right, they got to pay they, for it, though. When they took the position that they took against me, right. you know what they showed? Arrogance. Right. Disrespect. Really. Because if I set the bar mm -hmm. or raise the standard of me, Clearly you have. And they're going to offer America a substandard, mm. you know what they're saying? I don't give a damn mm. about my people. Right. That is exactly what they're saying. Because right. the people need to decide. The people will be your testimony as to who are... Uh, and how official or authentic or how legitimate you are, it comes from the people, right, people? All right. So, well, that, well, I mean, with that being said, I think that, you know, it's, it's always a sad commentary. I think it's, 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 it's our story, you know, I mean, that we've been, this story that you're telling now is the same story that's got us in the fit now. And it's really not complicated, Dr. Savi. It really is about us just making the shift and having a code of ethics. I know you, right? I know right? you know. Code of ethics, right? And you also know that the all mechs were black. Oh, yeah. I you know, know. know. Oh, yeah. And the Mexicans are proud of that. Oh, yeah. And they make a big lip. Big no, no. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I, mean, I, I want to tell you, now you say that, you know, now you brought me there, because they are, you know, I studied under the Omex in terms of natural time and cosmic time and cosmic law, because they're the one that actually brought the natural 13 moon calendar and calendrics to the world. So the Mayans, not necessarily was that, it was the Omex that were the parents of the, uh, of the Mayans. But I want to say also, if you notice that in Egypt, you know, they, when you see the monuments, they got all their noses blown off, right? And the, and the lips blown off and stuff. You see how easy it was for them to do that? Alexander the Great did that. Right, but they, now they, you ever, you ever see an Omec 
Play no. hey, with a, with a no. plane blown up? Because they ain't got that much, that, that much ammunition. They don't even bother with it. They'd rather bury it so you don't see it before they can try to obliterate it, you know, with their ammunition. So that's also another sign of knowing that Omic, and they were wise enough to know so that when it was time for them to discover and uncover or recover our natural legacy, you would find that the Olmecs, you know, are those, you know, who stood up against all the invaders. And that's why the Mexicans are this focal point. Same way with Haiti. That's why they're the focal point, because they're the warriors who took no mess from any invaders. They want to give it up for our Olmec ancestors. You know. Thank you. But I, but, I, but I think as we, we say that, and we say that sitting here, and most of us don't even know our lineage, you know, to that, you know, and our heritage to that. We don't see that. You know, and we don't see it to the degree that we don't realize that we have a connection to them to the degree that we can really claim that as opposed to everybody want to claim the slave story. I bet you I can do a survey right now, and most of us would probably think that all of us came through a slave period or the Ma'afa, which is not true. So the point is that are you doing any research to find out who your, what your heritage is and who are your ancestors so you can be able to have a sense of definitive knowledge as opposed to speculation about assuming that because there was a period of our Ma'afa or the slave period that we all was not necessarily coming through that lineage. And if that be the case, what is your role because you now know that? And what do you do with that information? You don't do a, a juju dance. You know, you decide what you're going to do to support those who are still in, in ignorance who may not want to support that which is obvious. And that is, you know, a brother who's doing healing by proof, not just by conjecture. And again, I just can't say enough how much we got to give our brother a round of applause. Not because he needs it, but because we need it. We need it. So, so now, Dr. Savior, all that's said and done, and you know that you know that you're a firecracker, you know, and, and, and you upset people, and people don't feel good around you because truth upset people. Yeah, truth makes you act like that. So I'm saying to you that you know we have you know we're in, we're in a, a a very auspicious time because you said last night about the paradigm shift. Yeah, and 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 that's and that's very much you know where we are. You know, we have to change the way that we have been doing things because we can get different results. Out of it, right? How much of that is what you're offering when you go to the city? I understand that you're on your way to Memphis. Memphis is next. Next stop is Memphis. Oh yes. Talk Memphis. a little bit about you know what your next stop is because don't leave us here in Atlanta because we I need love it. Memphis. So we all won't, don't want to follow you to Memphis. We want to be able to have something that we can have here. How do we root ourselves in the wisdom? Oh, not the wisdom, in the information. Of Dr. Sebi. You say you get it? Don't you get it? You got to shift it. Right. So the information of Dr. Sebi, so we can be able to know that you left your mark here and it's being effective and it's being utilized as you move throughout the planet geographically. What do we do before you go to Memphis? What do we do here as you go to Memphis? Because you already made an impact, as you can see. People love you. I was telling Mr. G and Rev that we need to open a place in Atlanta because what I felt last night was more than a rebel felt in the years I've been doing lecturing. I felt a love that I never felt before. Mm -hmm. Tears came to my eyes last night. Mm -hmm. And it was funny, when the audience got up to leave and I look at them, I didn't see a crowd. Mm. I saw one energy. Oh, yeah. One energy. Yes, indeed. Yep. It was so beautiful that I was overwhelmed. I'm going to tell you the truth. I was overwhelmed with Atlanta last night mm -hmm. to show the beauty. Oh, yeah, we the it, we the it. You know, and, I, and I ain't from Atlanta, but I'm gonna say we are the it. You know, we are the place, we the stopping ground. This is why the Russian, right. the Russian that's uh -huh. in the village right village now, right. asked me, why do black people have leaders? Mm -hmm. I said, I don't have one. I came up my mama and that was it. <laughs> All right? That's right. She said, because, I tell him because the leaders in America have misled and continue to mislead people. Mm -hmm. This is why in the healing field, I am a living testimony mm -hmm. as to what a Mexican could do. There isn't one black healer in America today that have done for anyone what a Mexican did for me. So when I talk, I want to talk on a level that we could raise our present position mm -hmm. because it's not too cool. Right. It's well, you know, the vibrations have already been raised to Dr. Sabi. But last night. Yeah, it, it was, it was I phenomenal. I felt you guys last night. Yeah, it was phenomenal.
I have to come back to this place. Yeah, but I'm do. going to Memphis on the oh, 21st yeah. of March. Oh, yeah. And Memphis has given me another level of vibration that I remember and I love. Mm -hmm. So we're going to Memphis. Yeah. Memphis is the scene of the crime. That's where they, they, they kill. We're going to Memphis. Yeah. They My sister. Kill Dr. King. Yes. Yeah, and, and they need a vibration raise over there as well and get some healing over there so they can know exactly how sacred that is because he gave his blood on that soul, you know. So, um, again, but you know, that's right, give it up for that, right. Um, but, but, again, you know, we, we we want to know, I know that I, I, I did a little hodgepodge there, but I really want to come back to you a little bit because we're going to have some Q&A in a little while because before you know I'm going to be getting those signs from my producers that it's almost over. But I want to be able to, you know, make sure we're clear. People may be listening and watching for the first time, don't know anything of you, you know, uh, and we need to make sure that people realize that we're not just having this conversation with a kook. And maybe so, maybe it is, you know, because we need kooks in our lives so we can get right. But the point is that there's something that we need to talk about in terms of people really who are out, out there really suffering from disease and illness and ailments. And they really truly are suffering. And, they, and that suffrage is really helping. It's, it's, it's hindering them from being a part of the collective so we can get to the, our liberation, our self-determination. And that, we need everybody. Everybody is needed. So when you say you see one line or one energy, one synergy, that's so essential to us having a critical mass to turn this thing around, right? You know, that's and, right. And when, so when you're seeing that audience out there, you're seeing that this is part of that critical mass that you want to do, particularly with the project of the 200 million that you think we need in order to pull us over, which is really pennies, is pittance, you know, I mean, it's not a lot. Two hundred million ain't nothing. I think that you know, was it four hundred million, two hundred million? Two hundred million. Two hundred million. It was two hundred dollars per person, something like that. You know, yeah, know. exactly. I mean, that's really pittance by by far. You know, we pay two hundred dollars on on cable. Y'all know y'all do, right? So, the idea that we, on your phones, your gadgets, you know. But but I think that it's important for us to talk about the healing for our audience. You know, our audience, you know, is the people. This is People TV. You know, and, I, and for full disclosure, I'm the president of People TV, and I really am honored to be that. You know, I want to say that. You know, that having this at our hem to use it as an access as it's supposed to be because it's public access to reach our people who are watching this, the elders who are watching this, who are ill. There's probably some AGO saying, he 82, you know, and they probably suffering, wondering how you got to 82 and you're doing so well and so prolific and so strong. So I want to be able to try to, you know, maybe as brief as we possibly can, I know it's difficult to be brief, to talk about these other diseases. You know, and when you say you cure cancer, it's not just something you're just doing out there. You literally have rid the body of cancer. We've been taught and we've been said that cancer cannot be cured. They got cancer institutes. They got pink, pink mumps where you wear pink breast cancer. You know, all this is going on. But but you have also shown that you can eradicate disease from the body. Cancer is one of them. AIDS was the biggie. You know, when in the 80s, AIDS was one of the major ones. That In fact, most of the assays that came in the court was about AIDS. You know, when they were first getting the HIV or whatever the case may be, and they were showing the T counts were low or the T cell counts were low. Doing? And when... You gave them the yeah. Um, I wanted delivery. Food. They had a, a couple of weeks. They yeah. came back and they, and went to their doctors because the whole thing is that when you go to the savior, he's yeah. gonna tell you he's not going to your doctor. He said, "Go to your doctor." Three oh five. And let him take the test. And then get, and get your results. Don't tell them what you're doing. Don't tell them. Nine twenty six. Just say and they think it's them, you know, and, 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 and they'll look at you with raised eyebrows. But that's what was happening. You, you had the actual and I'll come outside. diagnosis and say that you are. Okay, hold on a second. Give exactly me a second. Positive, turn this you, down. you got the A's or you got cancer. Nine, you got cell, 26. You got, and when Dr. Sebi gives you whatever the cell, cell food that he's talking about, that's the formula of our ancestors. The, the cross street is Bronx Park South, south and Daly, apartment 1A. You, a. you call me, I'll come down you know, and get so the, the food. The, let the, me tell you so what I want to get from you. Did you hear everything? Okay, A. I, listen. I didn't even plan on eating tacos tonight, but I read a good review about you guys. Food is bueno, so I want to try your food out. So this is what I want to get. Um, um, the chicken taco. When we talk about cancer, right? I want to get. I want to get. Okay, because I think they're two fifty each, right? Oh, cool. So give me. I'm going to try it. Okay. So give me. Um, give me five of those. Hey, I want. I want everything that I saw in this guy's picture. He took a picture of his plate, and he had like. If you got um, you know, uh, yeah, cancer okay, in the lungs or, or whatever, like, yeah. you, you just on the left. 
Yeah, okay, that's uncle, cool. Yeah, okay, as long as there's no yeah, pork, because I don't eat pork, pork, okay? Okay, now, I want yeah, that. Okay. Also, I want to try, um, and, and um all you do is I saw something else here, too. Uh, um, what is that? El pasta uh, taco. Is that? Oh, no, I don't want pork. Okay, so basically, you just got the chicken, right? That's right. Yeah. I, nah, I don't. I really had a question, but it was a okay. question. No, no, I just. Yeah. Okay, so then, just give me the um the chicken, right? Also, what else comes with that? Like, do do you guys got sides that go with that? Oh, okay, cool, cool. So look, here's the deal. Okay, they two dollars each, right? So, so I, I tell you what, this is what I'm going to do. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Just, just give me ten. Two, be ten. So I need to know what's the total, what your delivery and everything, so I can have the money. How much is that? Yeah, give me, give me um ten, ten chicken. Thirty. Okay, that's cool. And so, so, so that's the total for delivery and everything. Okay, cool. So, so when you get when you get in front of the building, you just call me. Oh, oh, listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my number because I'm using two phones, but my number is nine two nine three zero five seven four one three because the bell don't work and I'll just come downstairs. Okay, everything is good, right? Okay, thank you, my friend. Gracias. All right, thank you. But I know firsthand of your work, and I've been following you ever since, you know, you had come through to America in the 80s when you were in, in the 80s, back in the 1900s, right? You know, um, you were in... You were very young. I was, I was, yeah, I was, I was a baby. I was, I was, I was, I was, well, I mean, this is really designer. I'm still young. This is designer and white. You're very young, I said. <laughs> I said very young. You're still young. I'm still young, right. As you are. You're like right. Mr. G. Right. Yes, I'm a G, right, yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but I'm saying to you that, you know, I learned early because I was in a, I ran a health food store at a young age, you know. So I was, you know, in my early twenties when I was had a health food store and we were carrying and dealing with some of your products. We were the only one that would do it, you know. Or, you know, because everybody was like, ah, oh, that's not true, you know. So I'm saying that we need to make sure that you get the representation that you require, not because you desire it, but because it is yours to have because of your proof. As you said, you set the bar. You set, the, you know, the the the, the, the level of us having to go up against that. What do you think is going to be important for us if we understand the significance of your your arrival, your presence, your presentation? What is it that we need to do? I mean, what is it? If you get, if you were to give us instructions, I know you like to say that you don't do that. I'm not me, but I want to ask you specifically for instructions. What can Atlanta do? As we said, you're going to build something. We said build something here. What are we going to build here? What, what is it going to be? Atlanta? We're going to build a health center. Where in that health center, all of the components that you need. To revitalize the body would be there. The food that you need to eat would be there. To grow our own food. That's right. They would be right there. That's why Mexico play a very important role. Right, right. I could go to Mexico and get terracinte. Mm. I could go to Mexico and get a plant known as estafiate. Mm -hmm. The herbalist here doesn't know what that is, but it is a rewarding piece of material. Mm. I could go to Mexico and get the lily of the valley. Mm -hmm. The only herb in the world that has two active ingredients. Mm -hmm. These are the things I'm going to share with the sisters that we are selecting oh, yeah. to be the representatives of the African biomineral balance. Because I repeat it now mm -hmm. I'm not a healer. Mm -hmm. A male cannot be a healer, uh -huh. it's a female. Right. So whenever a man comes telling me that he's a healer, I know he's lying. It takes nurturing. Mm. I show AIDS, I show sickle cell, but that doesn't make me a healer. <laughs> it's much more than that. Mm -hmm. So we want to do something in Atlanta and in Chicago mm -hmm. and in Memphis and in Detroit and in Los Angeles and in New York that would represent that which really is complementary, not alternative. Right. Can you give it up for that? Yeah. So I think can I get a can I get a, a, a time check for my peeps? Where my, where my, where my producers at? So I we know exactly how much time we have before we start doing Q and A.
And this is live, y'all. We can do this like that. You know, this ain't, when you own it, this is how you do it, right? Oh, what well, we got, Mike? How much time we got, Mike? Oh, cool. Y'all want y'all want to ask some questions? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Line up around. Mike is uh, over there. Mike's our operations person. He's going to let you know how to do that. So come around. Don't come in front of the camera. Don't try to, you know, eclipse us up here. You know, go all the way around that way. And uh, ask your question. Let your question, and, and please let your question not be a commentary. Let it be a question so we can get more questions. And, uh, uh, Mike, are we, are we getting calls? Are we, are we able to get calls soon? Yes. Okay, good. How you doing, brother? Doing well. Hello, well, Dr. Savi. It's good to see yes, you. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> because you have raised the bar and you set the standard so high, I really don't want to study with anybody else. My spirit is on a similar path, similar mm -hmm. journey, and I want to do something very similar. I can't hear you too well. What happened to the mic? Yeah, that mic is for uh, us to record, but as he, let me tell you what he said. I heard him. He says that he don't want to study with nobody else. He wants you to be the person that he studies with or under, and his spirit is telling him that's where he's at right now, and he wants to. Is, is there a question to that? With how? Absolutely. How? And what's my advice? What, what should I do? Where okay. do I go from there? Well, the Bolingo project divided into two segments. One is the healing part, and the other is the electric, organic, agriculture department that we will be doing as males. I would love to do that with you, my brother. Of course I would, because we know that what we're offering is what we need, and that we never had it before. That's right. Give it up for that, yeah. OK, you will. Thank you, brother. And I'm sure, you know, um, uh, brother, uh, Dr. Sabi's team is here with him, so you can uh, get with one of them, and they'll tell you exactly how you can follow up. How you doing, brother? Talk a little loud. My brother, how are you? OK. It's good. Thank you for your energy. Uh, quick question, uh, as a, as a, let's take a vegan that, that's a power lifter or someone that's an athlete, uh, what would you, what, what's your take on products such as, you know, diatomaceous earth, uh, chlorella, um, probably like, uh, black rice, not the brown rice, white rice, but the black rice, and, uh, maybe, um, like bee pollen and things like that, certain stuff that, you know, that's out, yeah, bee pollen. Okay, bee pollen, uh, Today and yesterday, I share a honey mm -hmm. with some of the people in the audience. Mm -hmm. It's an alkali honey right. that you do not find in America. Okay. Why? Because the bee that makes the pollen that you're talking about mm -hmm. is a hybrid, hybrid animal. It goes in a box yeah. that they prepare for him. It's a farm. Right. If you take a pH of that honey, mm -hmm. the pH is 4.8. If you take the pH of the honey that I gave the people last night here, and Mr. G was one, it's 9.8. So the pollen from that bee is alkali. And they call that Morocco. The mole is a black bee. The black rice, the black rice, that is something made by Chinese. We don't want that. That's acid. Corella, that's artificial also. So all three that you mentioned are hybrid. Okay. No good. Wow. Dio, wow. Earth. Which one? Diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth? Yeah. What is that? It's basically, um, like, yeah, it has, uh, silica. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's like fossilized shells that have sulfur, and um, it's it's not it's not a, a hybrid. I just heard.